let's turn to chemo and immunotherapy combined, which has really come out as a strong option this year, uh, 2018. And just to back up a moment, we had an FDA approval in the spring of 2017 for a combination of carboplatin, Olympta, and Keytruda based on a small study with just a little over 100 patients. Mm -hmm. It looked promising, but was small enough that I think a lot of us were reserving our enthusiasm for that until we saw a bigger study. And this was mm -hmm. in patients with non-squamous, non-small cell lung cancer, because those are the patients where Olympta is a, a good choice, uh, but not for the patients with squamous. And again, this was also in patients who don't have an EGFR mutation or an ALK rearrangement, but it was regardless of the level of pdl one expression from zero mm -hmm to low level, one to 49%, or the about third of patients who have high PD-L1. Uh, but uh, this year at uh, a big meeting, AACR, which was in April of 2018, we saw a presentation and a coincident big New England Journal of Medicine paper that showed that a trial called Keynote 189 showed a very positive result for this approach of giving cisplatin or carboplatin with Olympta and Keytruda as a better choice mm -hmm. for better mm -hmm. overall survival compared to chemo alone. And uh, I would say that's a pretty practice changing approach. Uh, it, it certainly made me a lot mm -hmm. more enthusiastic. So do you agree with that? And would you say it's across the board for, for various levels of PDL one at least at least if you're not doing immunotherapy alone? I thought it was really impressive data mm -hmm. across across the board. I mean, um, it, it, uh, it really, what, what more can you say? Yeah. It, it's impressive. It improved overall oh, survival, about, progression free right, survival, and response, response rate, rate, all of those. And toxicity and it, side effects well, weren't any really, really more than really, you expect. Right. What would you say though about the patients with high PDL1 expression with greater than 50%? That's about a third of patients, and we know that these patients can do very well with Keytruda alone, but they were also in a group who did very well with chemo and immunotherapy. So, you know, how would you prioritize those choices? I'm interested in thoughts from both of you, Karen. Yeah. Again, I think to my point that I had said previously, it's really a, again about that patient that's uh, in the clinic with you and whether I think they have symptoms, their disease burden, a lot of things go into this decision-making process. And that's important that we consider all of the uh, patient characteristics, the molecular characteristics, uh, side effects, uh, those are really, really all together is what's important in making this decision. And I think again, pa there are patients that I would give the combination of chemotherapy plus Keytruda, and there are patients that I would clearly give just Keytruda alone. I think patients um, don't like to take chemotherapy, although chemotherapy, I think today is pretty well tolerated in my opinion. Um, but so, so I think it's, again, there's a lot of things mm -hmm. that go into this decision-making process. And as I said, to me, having options for patients is what I focus on the most. Okay, great. Uh, Sandeep, what do you think? Yeah. And part of personalizing medicine is beyond just the genomics, yeah, okay. it's you know, tailoring the therapy to the patient. So for a patient um, who doesn't have a driver mutation like EGFR, ALK, um, but who has high PDL one greater than 50%, um, I tend to decide between chemotherapy plus Keytruda mm -hmm. versus mm -hmm. Keytruda alone, um, where that decision really only applies if you have non-squamous, mm -hmm. non-small cell lung cancer currently, um, meaning lung adenocarcinoma, because mm -hmm. we can't use chemoimmunotherapy uh, for squamous patients mm -hmm. just yet, though I, mm -hmm. I know we'll be talking about that soon. Mm -hmm. um, but for those patients where chemotherapy plus Keytruda mm -hmm. versus Keytruda alone is that discussion point, um, it really goes based on symptoms of their cancer. So if they're having mm -hmm. painful bone meds, mm -hmm. difficulty breathing, 
um, what we, you know, breast cancer called visceral crisis, where we give, you know, two chemotherapy drugs. Um, those are patients I would still consider chemotherapy plus Keytruda in. Um, because the time to response is faster when you combine the agents. But a patient is minimally symptomatic, um, otherwise doing okay, has a PDL1 score greater than 50%, I would consider Keytruda by itself because they're not having the symptoms mm -hmm. that require that rapid response. I think of it as well as the patients who you can be very mm -hmm. confident mm -hmm. you are going to get two shots on goal mm -hmm. versus the ones who you're not. Those yeah. patients with more symptoms, mm -hmm. who have been losing weight rapidly mm -hmm. by the time you see them, mm -hmm. uh, who have had a couple of scans in the last month that show clear growth in that mm -hmm. short time, mm -hmm. those are the ones who I can't be as confident that six weeks from now, if their cancer is progressing, they aren't going mm -hmm. to be so sick that they will still be a candidate for chemotherapy yeah. and still be strong. So in patients where I feel like I may only have one shot on goal. I'm going to want to give everything up front. And for the patients who are stronger, who have the pace of disease and not a big bulk of disease that seems to be potential to, to sequence things, that, that would be my preference. Uh, in part because one of the challenges I do see about chemo and immunotherapy is that whether it's the cancer's responding or side effects mounting, you can't necessarily know which is doing the heavy lifting mm -hmm. and which treatment is more, uh, mm -hmm. you know, just coming along for the ride. And mm -hmm. we're talking about drugs with potential side effects and certainly added cost. Mm -hmm. And you would like to, ideally, if you mm -hmm. can, know what's working and what's, what's not. This, uh, at ASCO 2018, one of the most exciting trials, I would say arguably the most practice changing, was a trial called Keynote 407, mm -hmm. which was for patients with advanced squamous non small cell lung cancer and any degree of PDL1 expression. And this trial compared chemo alone mm -hmm. to chemo with Keytruda mm -hmm. at the same time. The chemotherapy was carboplatin with either standard taxol or a related drug uh, called Abraxane, nabpaclitaxel. And this study showed that there was a significant overall survival benefit for the combination of chemotherapy with Keytruda in patients with advanced squamous non-small cell. So to me, this study looks like the bookend, the, a mm -hmm. mirror image of what we've seen in a trial Keynote 189. Mm -hmm. Uh, in non-squamous histology, and I would, I would say that this is a very impressive practice-changing result, although we don't now have the FDA approval today to do that. But Sandeep, what are your thoughts about uh, where this fits into your treatment plans? Absolutely. I, to me, Keynote 407 was one of the most impressive um, presentations um, at ASCO, and I think will be the most practice changing once it's, once it's available. There was a survival benefit regardless of your PDL1 mm -hmm. expression, um, and these patients um, have a very um, impressive um, uh, control of their tumor with a combination of chemotherapy uh, plus Keytruda. The ability to use different chemotherapy backbones may allow us to tailor the regimens best to the patient and the type of side effects. If we're worried more about neuropathy, worried a little more about anemia, we can tailor the regimen. Um, but to me, um, Keynote 407, um, once this is FDA approved, we practice changing. And I imagine like Keynote 189, which has chemotherapy plus Keytruda in the non-squamous patients, will really round out um, what we do at the first line setting. And so to me, um, looking at all these studies together um, and thinking about how it changes my practice, I think for patients who are greater than PDL, PDL1 greater than 50%, regardless of histologic type, if they have minimal symptoms, I would consider Keytruda. If they're highly symptomatic from their cancer, I would consider chemotherapy plus Keytruda. Um, if they're less than 50%, uh, for me, I would consider chemotherapy plus Keytruda, depending on, with a different chemotherapy, depending on what flavor of non-small cell lung yeah. cancer histology mm -hmm. they have. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I got from Keynote 42 to plug into all this um, is that if you're 1 to 49 in terms of pdl one expression, if you're starting to have a lot of side effects from the chemotherapy, mm -hmm. I feel comfortable dropping mm -hmm. the chemotherapy earlier and just mm -hmm. continuing the Keytruda because you're not going to do any mm -hmm. worse um, based on what we've seen from Keynote 42. Mm -hmm. Karen, what do you think of? 
uh, Keynote well, I, 407. I, again, if I had to choose one trial that I thought was practice changing, I would choose a Keynote 407 because, mm -hmm. you know, our squamous cell patient population is still a significant number of patients that sure. we see, I see in my clinic every day, and we haven't had any real revolutionary treatments. I mean, we're happy that the when uh, Keytruda was posit was given for the greater than 50, but remember that's only a third of the patients or less. Uh, we still had that larger population to, and to be able to offer them a new regimen that improves their survival, uh, all of the other things that we've talked about, uh, response rates, progression-free survival. And one of the things that we, we hinted on is symptoms, but their quality of life. Mm -hmm. I, again, I think that there's really to be able to improve their overall life with quality is, is so important. And these regimens, I think, do do mm -hmm. that for our patients. So to me, this really is a, a very practice to, I'm very, you know, so happy to see that we've right. made progress in, yeah, in squamous where sure. we don't have actionable mutations like we do in right. adenocarcinoma. The progress so has been slower, th for sure. Definitely much slower. Yeah.